A hidden ecological disaster is unfolding off the California coast tonight. Yeah, the undersea kelp forests that so many species depend on are disappearing. KPIX 5 meteorologist Darren Peck here to explain why. What's going on? Well, Alan and Liz, like a lot of other environments that we might otherwise take for granted, climate change is now also robbing our coastline of one of its most important habitats. It's no wonder the kelp forest exhibit at Monterey Bay Aquarium is so popular. But in addition to getting mesmerized here, we also get schooled on how vital these forests are to almost everything that lives along our coast. That message might be more important now than ever. I just have this fear that people are going to say, how did we never know about this? Sheila Sammons is the executive director of the Noyo Center of Marine Sciences on the Mendocino Coast. And that places her at ground zero of an ecological crisis right now. I've had grown men crying on, in my office saying, I've been diving here for 30 years. I've never seen anything like this what can I do? We've seen 96% of our kelp forests have declined in less than a decade. Nora Eddy is with the Nature Conservancy. And this is a climate-driven catastrophe that if this was happening in our terrestrial forest, it would be front page news every day. These systems are just incredibly abundant, incredibly vibrant, and they're absolutely worth saving. Losing 96% of an ecosystem mostly hidden beneath the waves can be difficult to visualize. Let's just look at an eight-mile stretch of coast from Point Arena south. We start in 2008. It's a particularly good year for kelp. Everything in teal here is kelp forest canopy. The forest naturally grows larger or smaller from year to year, but in 2015, most of it vanishes and then never recovers. But the kelp didn't just disappear. It's been devoured by purple urchin who've recently been given two big advantages. Their natural predator, the sunflower sea star, was wiped out in 2013 by a pathogen. Right after that, the kelp's defenses also began weakening due to a warming ocean. Warm is hardly the way anyone who's dipped a toe in the water off our coast would describe it. But kelp is used to chilly 55 degrees. Lately, the water's been reaching the mid-60s. And for this ecosystem, that's a heat wave. Which brings us to the root of this problem. The Pacific is getting warmer. If we time lapse the last 10 years, we see an obvious trend. Areas in red show temperatures that are above average. By the time we get to 2015, the year our kelp forest collapsed, we see a blob of water so large, it's technically classified as a marine heat wave. But the blob, as it's been called, was quickly followed by other marine heat waves. There's one in 2017. Here's another one in 2019. Another in 2020. Some of that water along the coast was near 70 degrees. There's certain locations like this spot, Russian Gulch, where the kelp has just hung on. Assistant Professor Brent Hughes of Sonoma State University took me to a small beach where he's found a glimmer of hope in all this. If you're gonna restore by reseeding, then maybe you should select from the best populations that are gonna have the best chance of surviving if there's another warming event. Once you find a strain of kelp that maybe can tolerate the heat better, you get into the blades like that and you'll find perhaps millions of tiny spores. And if you can collect those, transplant them up here, maybe that will work. Eventually, we're going to figure things out. Right now, we don't have the answers, but we're, we're working towards it. You're racing against the clock. We are racing against the, the climate clock right now, yes. Okay, there was a small ray of hope in this story this year. If you look back at 2019, this is a stretch of coast along the Mendocino coastline. The kelp is virtually gone. Let's skip ahead to 2021. You can see a lot more of it here. It really did surge back, and there was a reason for that. Ocean temperatures off the coast right there. That's the California current, which went into overdrive this summer. And it really provided the best cold conditions for kelp you're going to find. We should have seen kelp flourish under a situation like that this year. Instead, we got about 10% of what would have normally been there under an ideal situation like that. So, yeah, the kelp did show signs of mm -hmm. being able to bounce back, mm -hmm. but nowhere near what it needed to, and it's not going to be enough because with more marine heat waves coming, other alternatives are going to have to work.
We're going to have to do something about this. The number one thing we have to do first, Liz, is get rid of those purple urchin. Okay. And there are a lot of companies and organizations already trying that, but that's just one of many things that have to come together. It's devastating to see those numbers and yeah. see that die off. Yes. Darren, such a great story. Thank you. Thanks.